Hey, welcome back to the studio. Today is three days from now, so I figure now is about the right time to get back to fixing this motor controller. You'll remember in a previous episode, it broke and then we tried to fix it and we couldn't fix it, so we just removed the broken part, leaving us only with the reverse. So now that we've got reverse only working, we're not going to try to use this part anymore unless we upgrade it. Otherwise, the exact same failure would just happen going the other direction. For sake of comparison, I bought these heat sinks, these aluminum, I guess they're about an inch square, heat sinks for this bucket of MOSFETs. But you can see the difference in construction between the tiny MOSFETs on this Talon SRX and this huge MOSFET, which is built for just sort of general use. Firstly, you can just see how much bigger this MOSFET is compared to the ones on this board. And secondly, you can see the form factor. It's not a surface mount component. And then you can use the entire backside to hook up to a heatsink. And you can have that be just a dedicated heatsink. You don't have to make that as part of your actual PCB. And that makes this MOSFET much better for continuous use. This is actually going to be pretty tricky because we really don't have very much space to work with in here. The heat's going to be draining to the bottom where we have, same as on this MOSFET, we have a metal, a full metal base. And along the bottom side, we have these heat pipes. We could try to add some additional thermal double stick tape, but this is basically already all that you can do. So this is gonna be kind of tricky. Now we do have some thermal double stick compound, thermal thermal double stick tape, double stick foam thing. The thing is this is already as much of a heat sink going through this thermal pad as it ever is going to be. The only thing we could try to do is get better contact between the thermal pad and these MOSFETs, the heat pipes down to the MOSFET. You can see on this thermal pad there are some imprints for the larger components. Because the way this forms together, I can't really... Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can push it down enough that I can see the imprint of the bottom of the MOSFETs, those heat pads. Now that's some better contact, I think. You can see the heat pad press. Yeah, you actually can see the heat pad better pressed after I just sort of wailed on it. So that may, that, that may be another issue. All of these indentations are a lot deeper now that I pressed down on it. And I'd mentioned in a previous video that I always touch these components after every run to see if they're getting hot. And this component was never more than just a little warm. Whereas inside, just a few millimeters away, these MOSFETs were melting right off the board. So it may be just that these MOSFETs weren't making contact with the thermal pad underneath. And that might actually get us better cooling, even were we to add more thermal pad. So I think I'm gonna go on Amazon and purchase me some thermal pad some brand new stuff, and I will customly add some heat sinking to this, and that will delay the next breakage until I finish with the secret project of making my own motor controller. I snapped my fingers and the thermal pad appeared. I only had to wait two days for it. Of course, we'll be doing this on our very scratchable and very conductive work surface, or, you know, not. We'll be using the sharpest tool on the claim, a knife. Of course, this isn't brain science, so we can just sort of guesstimate where we need to cut off this pad. Yeah. That'll do her plenty. I'm gonna go check on that burning piece of meat. Of course, it's called meat when it's still on the grill. And only once it reaches the surface is it called steak. Okay, finish that meat. 
Now back on to whatever we're doing here. It's a little tight, and well, it never hurt anyone. I think. Okay, maybe it's more than a little. No, no, it's, it's great. Well, I guess let's see if it works. Okay, it goes the correct direction. Let's stop before we kill ourselves. All right, return to flight. Sorry for the backlighting. Whew. Well, it works. And the motor controller, thankfully, is a little warm. It's actually a little more than a little warm. It was definitely warm when I checked it halfway through the ride. So that's good. That means heat's actually getting sunk out. But we're back to our original problem, which is that this motor is getting whoa, way overheated. Let me get that tomorrow. So ever since I cut open the holes in the motor, the bike has smelled like the inside of a Chinese motor factory every time I've ridden it. But now that we're going full speed, and our full speed is now 30 miles per hour, now that we're going full speed, it smells like burning Chinese motor factory. So that's going to be our next episode, I think. We're up to 150 degrees just on the outside. As I was saying, we're up to 150 degrees just on the outside. I need to go back and check the melting temperature of this 3D printed plastic. I might melt the motor mount right off the, the motor. Yeah, 150, 156, 160. All right, I'll leave her to rest for now. Until next time.